I will call to order the City of Pflugerville Parks and Rec Commission meeting for Thursday, May 19th. It is 7 p.m. Citizens communication. The commission welcomes comment on parks and recreation items. Public comment that is made on an item that is not on the published agenda will only be heard by the commission. No formal action, discussion, deliberation, or comment will be made. Each person providing public comment will be limited to three minutes and will be asked to state his or her name and address for the public record. Do we have anybody who wants to speak? Oh. No? Oh, we didn't get any ahead of time, so. Okay. Item 3A, approval of the minutes. Discuss and consider action to approve the minutes from the Parks and Rec Commission meeting on April 21st, 2022. Did everybody get a chance to read them? Bubba? I did. <laughs> Don't do that, please. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, Just give that nickname. <laughs> Anybody have any comments, questions, corrections? No, I was going to move to to approve the minutes. Okay. Thank you, Amy. So we have a second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Discuss only 4A, director's updates, including information about the project status report and upcoming special events. Shane. Hello. Well, hello. How are you doing? I'm lovely. How Do we are you? want to introduce our new uh, member? Well, please, go ahead. Yeah. Would you like to introduce everybody? Uh, sure. My name is Lisa Monahan. I've lived in Pflugerville for over five years now. I'm in the Falcon Point subdivision. Um, I have three young kids, uh, eight, six, and four, so my hands are completely full. Um, as you said, I am a storm chaser. This is something, but, but <laughs> yeah, but I'm a seamstress and a stay-at-home mom, and um, I'm very passionate about the direction of Pflugerville, and for what it's worth, I think the Parks and Recreation Department is killing it. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, nice to meet you all. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Okay, so director's report, uh, upcoming uh, youth and family events. We got Unplug and Explore at Cross Springs. Oh, we missed that one. That one happened. Um, yeah, it went good, right? Good. We don't have another one for June, though. No, we're, we're not camp. doing that until after the summer. Yeah, but we do have our fishing day coming up uh, June 4th, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. And we have eSports, board games, card games, Dungeons and Dragons, and pizza. Um, Alan has added a lot of new programs. Um, and if you're specifically interested in the Smash Brothers tournament or the board games night or Magic the Card game night or Dungeons Dragons or any of the other esports things, you, you can find them on our event calendar. You can see exactly, and, and you can also talk to Alan. You can see that was one from a couple weeks ago when uh, Councilman Mateo showed up and, you know, all dressed up to play against the kids before he went off to the council meeting. So. For our senior events coming up, uh, we've got the uh, Woodbine Mansion Tour. They're exploring Wimberley. They're going to a nursery, uh, a restaurant in Georgetown called Wildfire, uh, the Lampasas Museum, and then the Texas um, Hall of Fame. So Eddie's got them moving, which is great. Uh, this, is, this provides them an opportunity to socialize, to get outside, to not have to travel to any of these locations, and to do it together as a group, you know. And uh, the, the numbers have been growing um, it feels like all the all the uh, buses are starting to fill up on these events as well. So seniors are really starting to enjoy getting back out and going around. Um, we have an adults only. Um, we're, we're doing a couple of adults only programs this summer. Uh, we did the uh, canoe trip earlier. This is the mini uh, disc golf. There's two more over the course of the summer. Uh, it'll be on my slides here in a second. Okay, cool. Be, I'm sorry to talk about that. And then uh, our farmer's market has kicked off. Uh, it, it goes from May to October, and uh, there's some great vendors out there. If you follow our Facebook page, we try to highlight uh, a new, uh, not a new, but we try to highlight a different uh, vendor every every week on Facebook. The last one was the uh, Baking Burnette, Burnett. That's not how you say that. Burnett. Brunette. Brunette. <laughs> Brunette. Brunette. Oh. And if you're an Instagram person, we have an Instagram page now. So we have a <laughs> Parks and Rec page just for Instagram. And we got over 100 followers, which is, like, huge, I think. In, like, a week. I've been on Instagram for, like, 12 years, and I've posted 12 <laughs> times or whatever. So I'm, I'm essentially a bot. But uh, if you're uh, good at Instagram, please go check out our page. Maggie and uh, um, Catherine are working really hard on that. So the fishing day. Um, All-Star Fishing will be out there. They're going to be providing some loaner poles. 
uh, bait assistance and casting. We're going to have free snow cones for the first 200 folks. Uh, we're, we have prizes for Mandy's uh, frozen custard and raising canes. Um, Alan went out and put some fish attractors out. Uh, the lake is so big. It's a 180-acre reservoir. It's one of those lakes that if you threw any amount of fish in there, they're going to disperse pretty quickly. So they're not going to stay in an area like a traditional stocking would before an event. So instead of stocking before the event, we, we've, we've done some fish attractors. And uh, Alan got out in the kayak and uh, dropped. He created. Did you make them all yourself? Timmy made them. Timmy made them, and then you dropped them. Um, some PVC pipe that looks like trees, but it just provides fish an opportunity. Oh, thank to, you for explaining. Yeah, yeah, you no problem. I was going to ask. Yep. Yeah. A concrete bucket, a bunch of PVC pipes coming out, and then we'll be chumming those spots um, leading up to the event. So we, we'll have a bunch of corn that we're chumming it, and then the kids will be able to fish with corn and any of the other things we're chumming. So um, instead of stocking, we're putting our money into some infrastructure and try to get the, that South Bank um, uh, by Pavilion 4. Is it 4? Or uh, uh, Pier 4? Yeah. Sure. So, um, but please come on out if you're interested. You can register day of or you can register ahead of time. And that weekend is the free fishing uh, weekend for uh, Tex Parks and Wildlife. And so no one has to have a license that weekend, so you can go out and fish. They usually try to do it, I think, about the weekend before Father's Day, if not sometime near Father's Day every year, usually the first or second weekend in June. So June 4th, 9 to noon, and it should be a lot of fun. Music in the Park starting uh, next week. American Dreamers, the first group. And then uh, you can see the Southwest Lovers, Jesse Stratton Band, and Bitty Bitty Bonda. We'll close us out. They're all at Pflugerville Park, 7.30 to 9.30. There's no admission. Uh, bring your family, friends. You can, you know, do the lawn chairs, lay out, picnic. Uh, but we had great turnout last year with the uh, new location for the stage. A lot of people really liked it. In fact, we used it for Deutschenfest. It was kind of like a dry run for where we ended up setting the stage for Deutschenfest that people liked as well. So it's a great spot. You have this really large lawn presence that you can be out on. The shade happens quicker than you think. Being out in that spot, the shade gets it gets uh, covered out there pretty quick. And then all the play activities, whether it's the basketball court or um, the playground, are all behind. So the, the kids that might not want to listen to American Dreamer can still play in the playground area. So other updates. Uh, we've, we're still working on our master plan. Um, we, we've worked on engagement themes. And strategies this week. It was uh, uh, we, we we finished out a meeting today. It was it's going really good. I'm really excited about the team and what we're going to be able to reach out with and and start to engage the public. Um, the rec center, the new rec center, uh, we're going to have finalists. Uh, we had nine uh, different design firms interested in building the facility, and uh, uh, we we uh, junior I Larry, a couple of us um, reviewed um, their RFQs. And we got it down to four that we're going to do interviews first week of June. Uh, we're still looking to hire lifeguards and camp staff. Um, it's a really competitive market out there uh, for those positions. Uh, it feels like every week an agency we feel like we're competing with, whether it's with lifeguards in Austin or with camp staff potentially in Round Rock or everything in Round Rock, um, that their wages go up a dollar or two dollars. and. I think we're all just kind of holding on to the summer, okay. hoping we at least have what we have hired right now. Alan lost a staff member around Rock just this week, so. Another one this morning. Golly. So, <laughs> there, and, and we're and we've we've bumped our pay a couple different times, but every time we do, you know, another agency does it as well. And uh, um, I think in a city in general, you don't try to always compete with everyone else in the market for full-time positions. You look at culture and and other practices that use retention but for high school and college kids they just they are literally looking for the the most money they can make in those 40 hours a week and so um, we are starting to lose some folks so we're, we're hoping summer happens pretty quick um, as far as construction updates uh, the parking lot's going is open but it had fencing still preventing people from accessing it in certain ways fencing will be removed by this weekend uh, they're still working on restrooms the family restrooms are going to be open um, the men's and women's will not. We'll still have our four portables and six more. Yeah, total of ten. Yeah, we'll have ten portables out there for folks that are using the lake this weekend. But the, the parking lot looks good. They're still doing some punch-out stuff, uh, but they wanted to allow people to start to park out there. And uh, so people can go out. There's a 
they went from about 52 spots to 154 spots, I believe. So uh, plenty of ample parking out there. And then we got some city permitted events coming up. Pflugerville Pride is having an event in downtown um, on the 18th. And uh, you will see Railroad closed for that event. Uh, they're taking up downtown from 3rd to Railroad, I guess. And uh, they're gonna, their event itself uh, essentially stretches from the church all the way to um, 3rd Street. And we'll be at West Pecan and Three-Legged Goat and a couple different spots along um, the way. Uh, Hanover's, I believe, as well. And then Juneteenth um, is the very next day. Uh, we're providing our stage uh, to the Blue Road Pride, and then we'll be moving it to Juneteenth, which is at Wells Point Park, our soccer complex. Um, and it'll be Sunday, and uh, uh, it, it'll be contained completely within the parameters of the of the park itself. And we've we've been able to secure parking at. Um, that elementary school and the junior high that are near the Wells Point Park include it on top of the parking we have as well. So um, I think that's it for that. Wanted to give you all a Deutschenfest update. Uh, we had our second meeting, um, I think it was the 11th, about a week ago uh, with the committee. Um, you can see there was a couple changes made by council. So Friday night's still 5 to midnight, but Saturday will now go 10 to 10, not 10 to midnight. Sunday will be 10 to 1, not 8 to 1. Um, and Sunday will be at Finnig, and that's the, that's the health fair part. It's, it's not a three-day event. I don't want people to see that and think we went back to a three-day Deutschen Fest. It's still two days at Pfluger and then the health fair and the fun run on Sunday. Um, regular fees have increased, so, uh, so it's food vendor fees. Nonprofit uh, was a reduced fee. It was like 75 or 100 bucks. It's now free, but you're not going to be out Friday and Saturday. You're going to be at the community fair on Sunday. Um, any nonprofit that's interested in being at Friday or Saturday can put in a booth for food or artisan craft, but they'll be judged on the merit of their offering. So, you know, it, it, it'll be judged on their food or their artisan craft, not just because they've, they're a church or they're a local nonprofit or whatever. Uh, beer vendor increased as well. The electricity increased, um, and there'll be no political or nonprofit booths at the uh, location. Uh, political candidates can wear their shirts and walk around if they'd like. Other changes to Deutschen Fest: uh, we transitioned the fun run from an official chip timed 5K to a fun run. Um, it just allows us a little bit more flexibility in our program. The distances um, now that we've moved it to Finning, hitting the official. Um, number for a 5k was sometimes difficult and we had to do a turnaround and there were some concerns with safety so now that we don't have to hit that number uh, we have a little bit more flexibility in our route and uh, people still get to go out and have fun and we get to do a lot more themes that might deter you know people from running their hardest but have a lot more fun hopefully overall so we're, we're excited about that uh, there won't be a parade moving forward with Dorchen Fest it wasn't in the fall event if you remember Dorchen Fest used to be end of May so you'd have a parade right around 1st of summer, end of May, 1st of June, and you'd have a parade in December uh, for a Festival of Lights. When we moved Deutschen Fest to the fall, it was almost like you'd have a parade middle of October and you'd have a parade 1st of December, you know, somewhere about six weeks later. And uh, parades in the fall are tough instead of Texas. I think anyways, you've got a lot of band competitions, you've got a lot of football groups, even the, the, the younger groups are participating in sports. It'd be tough to get almost anybody to come out in a fall parade. And so um, we're removing the parade that will be associated with Deutschen Fest. And we, we will be moving back to a summer parade. We won't be able to pull one off in this amount of time this summer, but we're looking at potentially a July 4th parade. So some sort of 4th of July type parade. So we would still have two, and they'd still be kind of equally spaced out. And then we've changed a little bit of our gazebo programming um, as well. Any questions on those changes to Deutschen Fest? Um, you know, just as a highlight, Deutschen Fest is a, we've done 45 years now. Um, it's the 46th year, but we had a break for COVID, so they've done 45 straight years. So this will be the annual, the 46th year, our 47th opportunity to host that as a city, or the 47 years we've done it. Um, it was citizen ran for a long time, and it is now being uh, still run by the citizens, but citizens appointed by. Uh, council, um, and then that group reports to y'all through me. And uh, we, we made some changes from three days to two, 
and uh, there was a little concern for sure with some of the changes that staff had recommendation, recommended and council ultimately approved, but uh, vendors had their highest total for a weekend, even in just those two days, and we had some of our highest totals for uh, registration and revenue. So we're excited about what our changes will do to it. I think moving it to the fall, uh, it's an October fest type themed or a German fest type theme event, I think um, benefits that as well as that weekend specifically in May was one of the wettest weekends um, mm -hmm. <laughs> every single year. And so even though we did have a little rain after I convinced everybody to let me move it, um, uh, it wasn't the amount of rain that we normally would get in one of those events. Comings and goings. So Stephanie is leaving us. Um, she's been with the city two plus years. Husband serves in the National Guard. And uh, Stephanie's moving back to the DFW area where her family's from. And her last day, oh, I said June 4th, it's June 9th, huh? Did I say? You okay. said June 4th, I changed it for you. I'm glad. See, <laughs> I am going to miss her terribly, you can tell. Yeah. I still need that one more week of pay. I am going to miss her. She, she even changed one of the photos I put in of her. And then Jamie, who's like an unofficial member, um, if you've been upstairs, Jamie will definitely tell you what to do, and she, she'll probably be right on some of this stuff. And so, Jamie Seven, been playing in Paisel, has been active in going to our events and our programs, and we'll miss them both, and wish them the best of luck. We will miss you guys, too. So, real quick, I just do want to say to you guys, um, thank you for everything. When I first started here, um, commission meetings and writing minutes was not my forte, as some of you may well remember. I don't hold my breath as long when y'all uh, do <laughs> approval of the minutes. So, um, but it was a whole new learning thing for me, so um, I appreciate it, I appreciate your patience, and had a great time with y'all at the event of Deutschen Fest, hanging out with y'all underneath that booth. So I appreciate it. I um, see y'all later. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. All right. Item 4B, summer events, camp, and aquatics update. Okay, so y'all asked for us. I think y'all asked originally for aquatic update, and we thought we should probably just do a whole summer update because we got a lot of stuff going on. So I've got three staff here to talk about what we're what we're doing, and I'll let them come up and talk into the mic and get started. So looks like summer programs are first. Come up to yeah, you gotta sit there and talk and hit the arrow. Cool. Well, my name is Alan Songer. I am a recreation program coordinator, and I also have the title of Fun Camp Director. So. We are getting ready to launch our summer fun camp program. Um, our staff training will kick off May 31st through June 4th. So we'll be training them for those four days um, before we throw them out to the, to the wolves. Um, and then we'll be doing a parent orientation night on June 4th, that Saturday evening. We'll have a meet and greet at uh, Gilliland Creek Park at the pavilion where we host camp. We'll have the kids and parents will have an opportunity to come, grab a snow cone, mingle with the counselors, play some games ask staff questions and just kind of get to know us. Um, we are 100% 100 full and have been since a week after we opened our registration in March. Uh, we have been working diligently to get campers uh, off the wait list if families are choosing to withdraw or have, uh, are not pay choosing to pay the deposits to keep their campers in those spots. Um, our staffing count was at 13. We have lost a couple of those, so we are actually still looking for a few full-time counselors as well as uh, one or two substitute counselors. Um, so we're, we're process is ongoing, and hopefully we'll wrap up. <laughs> we'll figure that out soon. Um, sample schedule of our day is here on the right. So they'll come to uh, Gillen Creek Park and they'll check in at the pavilion. They have to have you know their parent with them to sign them in, um, and then depending on when they check in, they'll be playing games for you know, 30, 45 minutes while the rest of the check-in process happens. Uh, and then we will gather in the pavilion for a morning show, uh, which includes some counselor skits and a, uh, announcements about the day and the, the scheduled activities for that day. They'll, we'll break into group games uh, depending on the day and the game. Sometimes all 100 campers will get to participate in a big game of, cap for example, capture the flag or four-way dodgeball, or they might break into smaller groups and. and, and age-appropriate groups to play kick games of kickball or uh, different versions of tag. We have a whole bunch of, a whole list of group games we'll play during those times. Um, after that, they'll break into their class time. Um, so that's something we're 
uh, adding in for this year that we haven't done previously. So it's just trying to add a little more structure and schedule to their day. But they'll get to choose from nine different classes. We'll run them in two different groups at the beginning of the summer for the first five weeks and then at the end of the summer for the second four weeks. They'll get to choose from two different groupings of class. So if, if the camper attends all nine weeks, they can do nine different, nine different classes. Um, or if they're attending one or two weeks, they get to kind of give us their preferences, and if that works in our scheduling, we'll, we'll let them participate in those. So uh, we have a handful of those on here, um, different sports, including soccer, disc golf, um, volleyball, and then we're doing drama, fishing, arts and crafts. We're doing a, a, a new one called Fun and Games, which is like different yard games they get to learn how to play every day. Um, we're doing a board games class, we're teaching them to play, uh, you know, different types of games uh, on each of those days as well. So a, a vari variety of things that the kids can choose from. Um, whichever class they pick, they will be in that class for one week at a time. So there's a five-day curriculum associated with each class that our counselors will be trained in uh, how to teach for, for each group of kids. Um, so we break for like a snack and water break in the middle of those cl uh, class periods and have some cleanup time, and then we'll do lunch all together into pavilion. And after that, uh, uh, that's where the schedule changes every day. Um, so, for example, on Wednesdays, um, I think the Lemonhead Field Chips is our youngest group. They actually, we actually moved that to Monday, but um, I guess I didn't change that on this slide. <laughs> but the one day of the week, each age group will get to go on a field trip where they'll be in the bus, and those trips are to places like the Austin Zoo or Spare Time. Um, Dart em Up is a cool like Nerf arena they get to go to. It's a, it's a, it's a blast. Uh, and some of the some weeks, uh, all four age groups will go on the same trip. Um, sometimes we'll break it up to where the two younger groups go on a certain trip and the two older groups go on a different trip, just uh, depending on what the trip is to make them age appropriate. Um, if they're not on a field trip that day, they'll have either scheduled pool time or free play or a combination of both where they have the option. Um, free play time is when we kind of have counselors set up at different stations and uh, around the park with uh, the class activity materials or equipment, depending on what it is. So kids will have the opportunity to participate in the other activities um, that they're not in the class for. So it'll be a less structured time where if they want to go and uh, you know, put on the disc golf basket, the temporary disc golf basket we set up, they can do that even if they're not in the class for that week. So they'll have the opportunity to, to still participate in those activities in those afternoon free play times, um, as well as play on the jungle gym or play gaga ball. We'll be uh, installing a new gaga pit there at Gillen Creek for the purposes of using, using for camp as well. And it's a big hit with the kids. Um, what is gaga ball? So it is Israeli <laughs> dodgeball is what it's called. Okay. Um, we have we currently have it set up at uh, one of them set up at Heritage Park. It's at like octagonal oh, wooden okay. boards, and the kids like hit a one of those soft uh, gator balls or like a playground ball around. Okay. And they just try to hit each other in the legs to get a, get them out, basically. Oh, okay. um, they they love that game. They some of our kids will play that game all day if we let them. <laughs> um, so they had previously been using the gazebo there at, at Pfluger Park with the metal railing. Oh. Um, which is not it has those two big doors, so it's not super conducive to the game. So, yeah. we'll, we'll put in a real a real one for them this year, um, and then change pack up and then pick up will be from 4:30 to 5:30. Um, start that process at 4:30, you know, until the kids are picked up. So that's kind of a, a example day of what our schedule will look like for camp this year. Any questions about that before I move on? Awesome. Um, and just an update about kind of the other programs we have planned for the summer. Um, so with me being uh, busy full time with our camp, we have scaled back some of our programming. Um, so a few things uh, we are like putting on hold, like our board game uh, kind of events. So we still have our board game checkout program running, uh, but we'll be scaling back on our uh, in-person like scheduled events for the for that program. Um, but we will be doing. Uh, an adult program and a, and a kids or family program as well uh, each month still during the summer. So we do, we already talked, Shane already talked about the fishing day at Lake Pflugerville. Um, our July event will be fun with kites at Lake Pflugerville. We, uh, Timmy actually ran that event last year and had a huge success uh, with that one. Um, Saturday, August 20th, we'll be doing a uh, Nerf Wars uh, game at Heritage Park. 
Um, people can come and sign up. They can bring their own guns or they can use like a basic pistol that we provide and they get to play all kinds of Nerf games against each other. We'll be doing Captured Flag and Medic and, and, and other uh, games like that. Um, adult only programs is something we kicked off, like Shane said, with our kayaking or our, uh, canoeing trip uh, last month. Um, so we'll be doing the Flying Armadillo mini disc golf course uh, in June. In July, we'll be doing a kayaking day at Lake Austin. And in August, we'll be doing a trip to Jacob's Well uh, swimming hole. So those are our adult, uh, kind of adult outdoor programming. Um, and we'll be continuing to do one of those each month along with our Unplug and Explore trips when those pick back up in the fall after summer camp ends. Um, other programs we have coming up, so we are still doing Dungeons and Dragons and Pizza. There's a beginner class once a month that uh, anyone could sign up for. Those, the beginner classes lead into an intermediate, advanced, and graduate classes. Um, so once you go through all four of those, you should have the necessary skills to play your own uh, Dungeons and Dragons table. It's a, if those of you unfamiliar, it's a, a tabletop role-playing game. So you play as a character and you roll dice. Uh, so it's a really great way to socialize with other people and, and meet, meet and gain new social skills, especially for our, our younger players. And so once you get through that graduate program, you have the option to keep your table running um, kind of with guidance, but you, they play themselves. And so we actually had our first group graduate a couple months ago. Shane's kids are in that group and they've been playing their own table uh, now for three or four sessions. So it's been really cool to see them do that. So we're actually going to be adding a new table to that group almost every month now. And then so our program is, that program's growing a decent amount, which is really cool to see. Uh, our esports tournaments, uh, we usually do about two a month. For the summer, we're going to scale back to once a month. Um, we've had some success with both our Mario Kart and Smash Bros. tournaments. Rocket League is pretty new. We just started that last month, um, so we'll see if that can gain some steam as well. Um, that's, those have been a lot of fun uh, to play in and, and host. <clears throat> and then our Pflugerville Games Checkout Program, like I said before, will still be running over the summer. Um, we'll be picking a board game of the month every month and posting that on our Instagram account, so keep your eyes open for that. Um, it's a great opportunity to come and uh, try out a new game check it out here and play it without having to pay $60 for a, for a board game somewhere. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. And anyone have any questions about any of those programs? I think I spoke really quickly there at the end. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Alan. Next is our aquatic program with uh, Whitney. Come on up. <laughs> <coughs> Good evening. Um, so <clears throat> for the aquatics update, um, so some key dates. Summer pool operations are going to open up this Memorial Day weekend starting Saturday, May 28th, and it typically runs through Labor Day. Um, about August with kids shifting back to school earlier and earlier, about the last week of July is full weekly operations, and then we shift to weekends only um, as we start losing a lot of the guards to extracurriculars and, and things like that. Swim lessons start May 31st. We're going to be offering three three-week group sessions this summer, and then we'll also have uh, private lessons on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Our first session is currently already full. Um, it's May 31st to June 17th, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, and then splash pads are currently open. They run a little bit longer than our uh, typical summer pool operations, um, just because we don't necessarily have to staff them. So that's going to be May 2nd through September 30th, so right through the end of the month. Um, aquatic hours have changed slightly from previous summers. We're going to close on Mondays um, for just one maintenance day across the board to kind of knock out any little fixes, chemicals, get the pools cleaned again to get into the week. Um, so Scott Mincer Pool is going to be Tuesday through Sunday, 12 to 7. Gilliland Creek Pool um, is Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, and Sundays, 1 to 8. And I didn't add it, but Wednesdays and Fridays, it's going to be 1 to 5 p.m. Shortened slightly because we have swim lessons on those days. Um, so we shut down the pool to the public when swim lessons are in the water. And then Windermere Pool, different from previous summers, um, is only going to be for programming and lap swim. We just we don't get a very high attendance at that pool. So we're going to try to utilize it specifically for programming since we get much higher traffic at our other two pools. Um, and that traffic includes public, also daycares, camps, um, and pool reservations and things 
Um, Stonehill and Falcon Point Splash Pad are open 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, current staffing count. So as Shane was kind of saying, we are hiring. If anybody's got any kiddos or some uh, <laughs> family friends, I want to throw this way. Um, we're still hiring. We're looking pretty good on our lifeguard side for most point, um, most part, but we are still looking for swim instructors. Um, more so, as I said, lessons are already full. We're into session two. Those are getting pretty full. Um, and as much as I love teaching swim lessons that I've been doing for the better part of 15 years, uh, I don't mind not having to put my swimsuit on. Um, <laughs> we have about 80 staff total currently with about a 60% retention rate. Um, which is pretty good. It's a little low, um, lower than normal, but still pretty good for us. And then some additions that we have, um, we have pool reservations, not necessarily an addition, but it is going to be resuming. We did not, we were not able to do them last summer due to staffing shortages. And then obviously prior to that COVID, um, limitations. So we are bringing back pool reservations. Um, they are outside of our normal, open swim hours. So Scott Mentor pool, which tends to be the most popular pool to reserve is available from 10 AM to noon and then 7 PM to 9 PM, or you can get an additional hour and go 7 PM to 10 PM. Um, I already have pretty much all of my Saturdays booked for June, starting to get into July. Um, so it's, it's popular. People love Scott Mentor pool. Gilliland can also be reserved, but Typically, that's more of like your boosters, your bands, and things that are going to be a lot older, um, more grown-up groups, or we get some like companies that reach out and things for that pool. But Scott Menser is kind of the place to be for a lot of those private reservations. Um, what is going to be new are table rentals. Um, so we have, if you've ever been to Scott Menser pool, there's a pavilion area where previously we just had kind of these lifetime tables and chairs. Um, we actually, last year, installed permanent tables. Um, so you're going to be able to reserve those this year. Uh, it's an area that people love to have. Already got some of those requests coming in too, so I'm excited uh, to be able to have that addition. And then also, um, again, not necessarily brand new, but expanding it a little bit is going to be top time at Scott Menser Pool. Previously, um, we had it on Tuesdays only. It will be Tuesdays and Thursdays this year from 10 a.m. to noon. And it's really targeted towards those five and unders. So... We want parents to be able to bring in their younger kiddos, um, be able to enjoy the pool without all of the, the big kids pushing them out of the way. Um, so I already got some requests about that. So um, public seems pretty excited um, about a lot of the things that we're able to resume and also kind of expanding. So um, hoping to get a few more staff and uh, have, a, have a good summer. Any questions for Whitney? And then last will be Larry, talking about events. Good evening, everyone. Hello. My name is Larry. I'm the business operations coordinator, and I've been with the city since uh, late November. And so uh, my first summer here, so I'm looking forward to these events. As Shane mentioned earlier, the music in the park, it's at Pfluger Park from uh, 730 to 930. We've got a really exciting lineup this year. We start next week on Friday. Pfluger Park is a great venue for this, and we typically have pretty great big crowds. We also have the uh, floating movie nights at Scott Menser Pool. On June 10th, we've got Luca. July 8th, uh, Sing 2. Uh, the programs start around dusk, and however long the movie lasts, there's uh, lots of fun things for the do. It's a good family entertainment. We're working, uh, been working for a while on our July 4th fireworks, our partnership with Typhoon Texas. Uh, if you're, you can watch it from a surrounding area. People typically go to Costco, um, Stonehill, uh, the area high school. Uh, there's a few things going on. It's a very fun. We typically partner with uh, iHeartRadio and it's simulcast over the air. That's what we got going on summer. We're working on fall activities also. Thanks, Larry. So uh, you can see we're we're pretty busy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we we got a new software, and uh, y'all know me. I'm not very good with software. Uh, this thing, you know, still trips me up all the time. I had a BlackBerry a couple years ago, but. Um, <laughs> We, we worked with GIS, which is uh, um, the mapping folks in the city, 
to, uh, are you laughing at me? Is that not, they're not, they're Matt people, right? Is that, is that him yeah, laughing at me? <laughs> well, you laugh at me all the time. Well, that's true. But um, there are mapping folks, and they do a lot of stuff with uh, um, working with the city on development and, you know, future growth, and they do all the maps that we have going on, and, and uh, we were able to work with them to um, obtain some software called Placer Data, and uh, we're just now still rolling it out. We're... I had one um, hour-long training session. It felt like three and a half days. Um, <laughs> I beg to not have to attend anymore. They've been attending every week, and they're teaching me some stuff. And, but I've been able to figure out on parks um, about annual visits. And this year, um, we're on track to have just a shade under 900,000 annual visits in our park system. So was, I think it was 872,000 annual visits. So this park system is well-loved. Um, Junior and his guys do a great job maintaining it. My program rec staff do a great job uh, programming in it, and uh, we love to see um, how much use it gets. It's 37% increase from last fiscal year to, to this one, and we're on track to do 20% more. So almost a 50% increase from, from COVID. And unlike almost every place else in COVID, we saw a lot of use in our park system in COVID mm -hmm. just because no one else could go. And so we're able to track through that placer data all the way back to 2017, and uh, our, our usage has just continued to go up. As the city's grown and more parks have come on, obviously, you would expect that, but, you know, a 50% growth in annual visits in two years has is, is, is really shown the hard work that the staff does. I'm super proud of them. So thanks for letting us show them off a little bit. All right, item 4C. Discussion of ideas to create a more inviting and environmental friendly entrance way to the rec center. So y'all think my rec center is ugly coming in. <laughs> That's where well, this came up. And it might I be. I don't know that we would say ugly. So um, I took a couple photos. Right. No, you're totally right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was mentioned last time to maybe just do a discuss only. Maybe we can talk about what people would like to see. Um, and we can go from there. So these are the couple photos from the entrance. We didn't get one on the other side, but um, behind that bench over there, it's, it's really just um, dirt. It had been, do you remember what it was previously? I, it was just holly bushes. Yeah. And then that's the entrance. So it would be up to the imagination of this board. I know it was something that y'all were interested in, in seeing us um, freshen up and to be quite honest, I think we would we would we would um, entertain any any uh, recommendation. Do we have what do we have in the way of irrigation? It's all irrigated. It's all irrigated. So, we're good on that. so awesome. Eileen was the last landscape architect we had. Which has been a while. It's been a while. So um, I think some of this was COVID and self defense, and once again, I mean, Junior saw an increase in a lot of different facilities and. So I think we pulled out some troubled things and let, let what grow is going to grow. So mm -hmm. we're, we're very interested in having a conversation, seeing what this board would like to see us do, yeah. whether it's color or something particular. We Color's would definitely um, more color. move yeah. forward. Yeah. 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 So, but, yeah, Junior, Junior knows a lot about the irrigation and what we've had in the past. And we obviously it's just discussed only today, so just wanted yeah. to hear everybody's feedback. Yeah, I like color. Um, at home we do a lot of different things, but... Um, our lantana works, it's very hardy and it's pretty doubt, drought tolerant. It loves full sun, so once it's established, it doesn't need much. I'd love to see um, if we could get some milkweed up there to attract some butterflies. butterflies yeah. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. going to say, when you go from, I call it the goat path, I don't know what other people call it, but the goat's out right on the trail, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, going out to Grand Ave, like barring any cues we had from there of like, Natural wildflowers, stuff like that. Yeah. I think we need to make sure we do something that is, it's you know, inviting, but also something that's lower maintenance and something that, you know, won't require too much water. I mean, we want to be a good citizen. Right. I know that the through, when we had. Uh, Drop by drop, we had recommended plants and um, 
trees and stuff we could grow, so maybe we still have that list. Yeah, so that program has transitioned over to utility, but we and it's an education program now, but we definitely have the list. Um, we've also put in our budget for a, a parks planner, which would have an LA, so we hopefully will get um, at least one LA back in our roster. And then, and that's for what we requested a summer, a, a summer amendment, an immediate hire essentially mid year. And then uh, we have a forester position in the fall that could even help. Mm -hmm. um, a forester, I think we talked about this, right? Forester, yeah. arborist. So more so an arborist would, would a forest usually handles groves of trees, but they would be able to assist with this as well too. So. Um, do we have any sort of budget or would we need to have volunteers to do it? Junior? I don't think we have a budget. Um, we, we do or do not? No, we do have a we budget. We do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we, some of the staff could take on for sure. I mean, I would think it would be neat if we had... Do you want to do like a cleanup day yeah. or something? Yeah. That way, I mean, every time we come here, I, you know, I take a lot of pride. My husband and I were involved with some of the plantings at the, out at the lake years ago. Mm -hmm. And I like it when we walk out there, and I'm like, I planted that tree, and it's still there. Yeah. So there's a lot of pride in that. Okay. Junior, is there a time that we need to avoid? Well, like the I whole summer? Like or should we <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this probably definitely be like a fall project for sure, especially if we're talking wildflowers and stuff like that. Is there anything we can plant now to just uh, kind of patch us to the fall? And then we can do You can do lantana. Lantana grows. Really well, yeah, really well in the heat. Yeah. So we don't have this as an action item, but if I could get head nods, maybe we could just. Are y'all comfortable with us throwing lantana and a couple other things in there between now and the fall? Does everybody know what lantana looks like? Does anybody yeah, not know? It's got pretty, it's pretty flowers. Yes. Mm -hmm. So oh, if we did some some Pride stuff. Pride of Barbados that is another yes. one that seems to do well, and yep. I can't kill. <laughs> <laughs> And that's something even I can give some seeds because I have them at my house too. Yeah, we, we cut ours down and then it kept popping up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, that'd be really pretty too. Yeah. Right? It's hardy is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all be fine for now if staff did something in the immediate to add a little yeah, color. just a little bit of color. And then we would work with y'all to do some sort of fall. Yeah. Like a planning day. I like that. Any concerns? Mm -mm. Okay, cool. I don't even think that needs to be brought back for an action item, at least not now, because I don't, think, I don't so. think we have a date yet. Yeah. We can bring that back in the future, though. Cool. Any other, anything else? Okay. All right, we're at 5A. Uh, we're, there was a supplemental, I'm sorry, 4D. On the okay. Is it on the back, maybe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, 4D. We added an important thing for Eric to talk about. Okay. Presentation and discussion regarding the SH-45 small area plan. Eric. Hi there. Hello. Thank you for allowing me to come back to you tonight to discuss a project that we're working on and just kind of give you an update. We did um, the... Aspire 2040 plan was adopted in, in April. And so this particular item that we're working on is uh, an implementation item of the comprehensive plan. And one of the reasons why I wanted to discuss this with you tonight is because we are having an open house on June 16th, and that is the same day as your next Parks and Rec Commission. So I thought maybe I would come in, talk to you, give you an overview of the project, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, one of the advantages of attending the small area uh, plan open house, at least on the forefront, um, at 6 p.m., there is a presentation. And so if you did want to go to the first part of it um, before this meeting, that would be ideal. Um, there will, the open house presentation will be filmed. So it'll be posted online, and then there'll be a survey that you can also take. So you can still participate in the process. It'll just be kind of partially there at the presentation and then the, the online survey that we'll get up there for you. The, uh, the survey will be posted for two weeks, so that should give you plenty of time to uh, participate in this. So the small area plan for the SH-45 um, area, it's the, the northern piece um, abutting uh, Wilkie Lane, um, or SH-45. 
Uh, it is an implementation item within the Aspire plan. It will refine the, uh, future, or the Aspire future land use map, so it will provide more details on the land use mixes that you'll find there. Um, and it will help provide guidance for any sort of future rezonings or any sort of regulatory tools that we would put in place. So that would be kind of the purpose. The other items within the small area plan, it would, it would provide additional goals for the development of the Uptown Neighborhood District. And I believe you'll have some copies here. I just want to kind of give you little excerpts of the Aspire plan. Um, also through this effort, we'll try to identify potential locations and additional goals for parks and open space within this area and potential alignment of row lane extending from um, Heather, Heather Wild Boulevard to 130. So they're in the transportation master plan. It calls for that extension across 130. Um, road lane extension, it's classified as a minor arterial roadway within the transportation master plan with 100 feet of right of way. Uh, it would be four lane divide four lane divided roadway with the median and 10 foot shared use paths on either side. So that would be kind of the, the expectation there. Um, just to kind of give you, I wanted to briefly kind of talk to you about the, the land use categories that you have within the future land use uh, map and the Aspire plan. Uh, the, the mixed density neighborhood is kind of focusing more so on residential uses. Um, it's intended to provide for single family small lots, some of the missing middle types of housing, and that would be like duplexes, townhomes, fourplexes, stuff like that, and would also provide for your, your basic courtyard, garden style apartments, as well as urban apartments. Um, this, this brown area shown on the map here would also provide for opportunities for um, neighborhood scale sort of goods and services. I had a question about that. Sure. How do you put an ADU on a small lot? I thought an ADU would typically go on a bigger lot. That was confusing to me. Yeah, and so with uh, the way to kind of interpret this is um, the, the ADU or the accessory dwelling unit would be somewhat conditional upon the primary use. Uh, we do have some yard standards within our development codes that sure, this use or the accessory dwelling unit may be permitted, but you still have to meet all of the dimensional requirements. So, and I think small lot is somewhat relative. It's really just based off of how you define it in the code. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the what I was getting confused on was the small lot. I'm like, yeah. are you going to put an ADU on a small lot? Okay. Yeah, so, I, you know, just um, kind of speaking relatively, I would think that a single family small lot would be probably 6,000 square feet or less, not your basic 9,000 square foot lots that we used to have that were probably built more like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. As land prices go up, mm, the lots are getting a little bit smaller. Yeah. Uh, just to make it more affordable. The next, the next land use cate category that I'd like to kind of show you is the mixed use commercial. Um, this can provide for your basic apartments, urban style apartments, but it's probably geared more to the, um, the non-residential side for providing for neighborhood and community regional scale commercial uses. I probably should have mentioned earlier that the little hash mark um, um, in this particular area, oh, right here, is actually in the ETJ, but from our future land use map perspective, we were still trying to account for what we anticipated as being future land uses, but from a regulatory st uh, standpoint, the city does not regulate land uses in the ETJ. We're not able to. Mm -hmm. um, the next category, the Innovation Center, it's that maroon color. You're probably your favorite color, right? Yes, is yes. that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's Innovation Center. This is primarily geared to employment centers. Uh, it would pr potentially allow for urban style apartments, but that's more conditional. Um, and then the last category is really the employment section. And I'm just going to skip over, but that's, that's, that's your basic sort of industrial sort of land use category where you might expect um, industrial flex space. But that's uh, particularly in the, the ETJ. The, the difference between the employment here and the innovation center is that the, the light industrial flex is more conditional in this regard. 
So it gives us uh, Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council uh, more discretion as to whether or not it's appropriate. And it, it dovetails with um, our existing zoning ordinance in place that requires that sort of use in the corridor um, to be permitted by specific use permit. So it's discretionary. Just wanted to give you that overview because I wanted I want to start moving this conversation to more of the parks and rec side, but with the, <laughs> the um, generally the, the land use types that you see within this SH45 small area plan area would potentially provide for more residential uses. So there is an opportunity for additional parkland here. Um, another goal, obviously, the, the 10 minute walk to a park, um, we, we've expanded upon that within the Aspire plan to ensure that it's a 10 minute walk to all types of good services. So that's generally what we would like to uh, find here in the, this plan. Transitioning into parks, you see. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, uh, the, I, I kind of grabbed this, this map from uh, the Trust for Public Land, but it shows that this area is highly underserved. And you could probably just eyeball the map too and notice that we don't have a lot of parks in this area. So through this small area plan effort, we hope to um, identify opportunities for maybe a centralized park uh, with additional. No, and you're fine. I was just oh. going to say. Sorry. We, we use Trust for Public Land as one of our areas to see where we're lacking, uh, like Aaron was saying. And you can see that there is a section saying that it is served, but Trust for Public Land doesn't know if our land is developed or undeveloped. So that is actually parkland that we own. It is undeveloped. And so it's really not serving that population either. So you could essentially say that whole section is purple, not just, you know. Yeah, if you can kind of go back to the other map you'll see up here, um, in the, the future um, the future land use map, most of these are drainage facilities. Mm. So generally this area needs additional parks and hopefully through um, the development of this area, um, we would be able to at least have through either the, the development process, dedication of parkland or potentially some sort of public private partnership to ensure that, that we get additional parkland in this area. So, just want to kind of give you a little bit of a preview of the, the draft goals for the parks and open space within this area. Um, some of these dovetail with what, what is already in the, the Aspire plan. We've moved some things over that we felt was applicable to this area. Um, one of the uh, goals that we have articulated here is to integrate a destination park that draws visitors from the region and supported by nearby residential, retail, and entertainment uses to have more of that synergy. Um, locate all residential units within a 10 minute walk of a park and open space. Support urban art, um, agriculture and connecting people with Pflugerville's agricultural heritage. Support efforts to incorporate art into parks and open spaces. Potentially create a, a looped trail system within this area and also pursue opportunities for long term private maintenance of public facilities or public parks and open spaces. That would have to be some sort of public-private partnership, but um, there's some opportunities there to work with the developers on that. That's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, if you had any or, uh, initial feedback that you would like to share with me, you're more than welcome to provide that now. Um, and highly encourage you to participate in the, the open house and the survey that goes with it. In the open house, um, there will be three development scenarios that will be provided, and then you'll kind of work through the survey identifying which ones are your preferences, and you'd be able to provide just additional comments on what you like and what you dislike and what you'd like to see in this area. So the, the triangle sections, it sounds like, are already park yeah, age so undeveloped, and then the new green sort of baseball diamond shapes to the west are... I'm just trying to figure out what the net new is proposed. Oh, for additional park land? Yeah. So that I don't have. That's going right. to be based off of what the development brings. Gotcha. So this map is existing. That's actually um, future land use, anticipated future land uses. Gotcha. So in the brown, maroon, and, and, and um, uh, red areas, you might have a significant amount of residential. So there's some opportunities yeah, through anticipating. the. 
they're anticipating Parkland would come through the, the, the development areas. process. Yeah, the yeah. development process would yeah. go into the, uh, the areas that they would be able to develop on. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, our, our themes in general, right, are contiguous, trail connected. Um, yeah. So where there's opportunities for that, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah and trail can, uh, and the loop trail is huge here because you're on the you're on the north side of 140, right? Right. Or one, so 145, no, right. Get so instead of connecting through making that a big deal, just making sure the folks that live, work, play, whatever up there have an active location for them to be able to go. So trail is the way to go. Does does Round Rock have a trail system near there? Uh, yeah. Actually, there's there's some connection points around. It that. would be it would be kind of interesting to connect be to able to connect into them as well. Throw your trash on their side. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a very interesting idea. I mean, that could be win-win for both cities. Yeah, because yeah, like I had friends who they they would like bike to downtown Round Rock, and I that's like. If I had a better way to like do that, then I would consider it. But until <laughs> yeah, sure. no, I think there are some opportunities. It's funny. I, I think we've worked previously in our previous master plan, and we're working on the new one now. But the one that was now 11 years old, I think they worked with Travis County potentially to connect some Travis County stuff. Yeah. And I think Williamson County right. res. Uh, um, Cities work with Williamson County to connect those. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how. I think our trail master plan 2013 pr had some connection points to Round Rock, actually. I think it was further west. It wasn't at this spot. Yeah, it was like Grand Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grand it was Grand Avenue, Avenue and stuff. But, mm -hmm. oh, okay. you know, this, th this was like three farmers' property back in that time. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I think that would, that would actually be great. Then, then the folks on that side could have their looped and then still have connectivity to yeah. whatever Round Rock provides. Yeah. Yeah. Do we own this land now? We do not. Okay. We just know where development is going to come parks. Uh, okay. Through the Parkland ded dedication mm -hmm. development. So what we're trying to do is be ahead of it early and say what we want. So when there's a when there's a developer so coming through here, everyone's yeah. on the same page. We want destination play. We want trails. We want agricultural or dog park. art pieces, dog yeah. park, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, right, right next to the road. And, <laughs> and through this effort, we've been working with the large property owners in this area. So mm -hmm. all along this extent, we've been working with them to at least get their, their feedback on what they would like to, um, what their envision is for developing the site. Um, but obviously we need to go through a, a public participation process to help refine that Aspire plan. So hopefully um, we can all kind of come together and and make this, um, develop this area um, to what we envision it to be. What stops them from just doing like large lot, single family homes? So, um, and I didn't provide all the slides, but um, from a zoning perspective, <laughs> most of this area is zoned CL4 and CL5, which is a commercial um, districts. CL4 allows for multifamily, but by specific use permit. In CL5, you have that permitted by right. So within this whole area, you, you should expect higher density, multifamily, um, and commercial uses. If they wanted to go about providing for, say, um, lower density residential or missing middle housing, uh, they may have to go through a rezoning process. And so with the small area plan, that's somewhat what we try are trying to accomplish is providing for some refinement of this map, uh, this future land use map to identify um, potential areas where we need to buffer from existing single family with kind of um, stepping down the scale of, of density and, and intensity. So yes, back to your point, regulatory, it, 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 um, they would not be permitted by right to um, build single family as of right now. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, again, it's June 16th in about a month, our open house. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Discuss and consider a time frame.
think it should be to reach out to Pflugerville ISD principals for tree planting challenges. We're going to talk about you next meeting about that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll zoom her in just to let her know. Um, this was this is a discussion uh, to uh, to bump up a previous action item that we had talked about for the fall. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Scott had talked to some folks yeah, in the so ISD. So, so I have a couple friends who are assistant principals, and they said the start of the new year is not good at all. And now that t uh, state testing is over, we should do it right now, if possible. Carol had been working on um, a, like an initial letter talking about uh, the the concept and uh, it ran through uh, Maggie and myself we, we gave it some edits and sent it back um, I haven't heard back from her yet um, about the changes and what she'd like to do or whatever but I think on that side and it wasn't school specific it was more of the challenge but I think you could provide that edit a couple things saying we're, we're trying to do an overall um, Challenge to increase the amount of trees in our park in our in our public right-of-ways and park system And this will be one way for us to be able to do that is to get some trees on on school property or y'all could create a second list Just you know for that, but um, if you remember y'all had talked about creating some sort of copy that would go out to the schools and then dividing and conquering the campuses, so mm -hmm. it seems like y'all's timeline might bump up if, if you are interested so is it like through June and July that's a good time? Or like what when you say right now, like how long do we have? So like the first week of June. <laughs> really? Then they leave and then they don't come back until August and then they're worried about start of school. Okay, so they don't come back early? I mean not not super yeah. early. Okay. Um I mean first we just need a list of all the schools, right? Yeah, and start reaching out to, to them. Yeah. But yeah, they said to reach out to the principal and any kind of assistant to make sure that it gets read. And then did we did we decide we want to actually go there in person and meet with them rather than just send an, an email or a letter, letter, right? Or what did we decide? That was the discussion. Yeah, y'all yeah. would split up and then folks would reach out to an administrator and maybe an administrator's assistant and then would follow up with like a face-to-face, -face, see okay. if you could get. And from the ISD side, once again, it's... That principal has the right to say no. That principal has the right to say where the placement goes, depending on, because once again, if a kid runs away from school and the principal or any other staff member is trying to run out to see, they, they, they can't have an obstructed view of where this, this child has gone off to. So they will have spots on their campus that they probably will um, veto and spots on their campus where they're like, yeah, if it's over here and it's out of our line of sight, you know, it's approved. So. It's essentially up to each principal to decide if they want to do the program and where they're going to place it. So I guess to start, maybe if we divide it up and somebody took like contacting all elementary schools, somebody took contacting all middle schools, somebody contacting all high schools and trying to get the ball rolling. It's a very different amount of schools to contact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a suggestion. Yeah. Two, you know two people do elementary schools? <laughs> like, I, know. I know there's communication rules between us, but it, are we allowed to start like a Google Doc and work on a letter that we're going to send and bring it to be voted on our submit? That's a great question. Because as long as you're not communicating through that Google Doc, you know, once again, just a reminder and I guess an update, um, everything's supposed to be transparent, right? Yeah. So it's... You know, you can't email everybody offline because a citizen doesn't have access to those emails and you, unless they're open records and you don't want to deal with that. So, you know, you can email Lisa and I individually, you know, and we can email everybody as a group or whatever, but, um, and then it's it's all, but someone can't respond to it all. We, we have to set it in such a way that even if you tried, you'd only respond to Lisa and I, so it blind copies everybody else. So it's really tough to communicate, and I know that that's frustrating, but... I, yeah. You could do it. You could set up a Google Doc, and you could post, and um, people could see it and say, "Okay, this is how we're moving forward." Yeah, if forward. we include it in the yep. agenda, right? We just leave it yep. open. Yep. Great. I can I can start the doc, and then I'll just send it around, and we can add it to the minutes. Yeah, I think I think as long as you're not communicating in an email or through the doc, I, I believe that it would be okay. You're you're talking right now about setting up a Google Doc, which you're allowed to do. You're going to set it up, which you're allowed to do. You're going to send out 
the list or whatever may be in responsibilities which you're allowed to do and as long as everyone's not emailing each other in that process I I don't think it is against any rules sweet so that'll be us a letter okay and you won't have to take action if you don't want to y'all can just discuss and table or discuss and let it die or you can make a motion at some point for action it's up I mean if we're gonna do this within the next couple of weeks we have to yeah we need yeah. to do something yeah yeah so uh, along the same lines it might be good to like have an excel uh, spreadsheet as well and list all the schools and then we can have like a column of, like who's been contacted i would imagine getting a hold of every school and who the principal is probably pretty easy right i would assume yeah, every website yeah, yeah. shamas elementary has larry running it and that's his probably not his office line but the main office line like i imagine and there's probably some email system Larry dot my or whatever you know at you know Fleurville ISD. I imagine it's mm -hmm. in that sense it's probably pretty simple to get some of that set up. Yeah. Moving forward from that, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I might start working on that at least make the list and then we can. So you're making the letter. You're doing the letter. You would be compiling a list. Yeah, I might make the list and then send it to you, and then you can share it you know what yeah, i mean yeah, so then like savvy, the same yeah. way just because i'm not as tech savvy so <laughs> make sure it's like a shared document or whatever um and then but then we'll just have to once we get the list down figure out how, who's going to contact and and all that jazz but i guess we could just do that one-on-one -on -one well, try you, to figure we could go to the list and say lisa has this scott has yeah, this as long as scott and i are not talking about it together right Okay, so then you just would sign up who you're going to contact and then how much luck you've had with that. And then setting up meetings, do we want to do that in pairs or do you want to just like, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's going to be another thing that's going to be. So uh, right, like since school's about to be out, I don't know how capable I will be of going to meetings um, because I have kids that yeah. I'm watching. Uh, oh, yeah, so <laughs> it's just phone calls or are you wanting it to? Because I could do phone calls, okay. but in person yeah. with three kids, would they be like, "Hey, we just got rid of kids." Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would just be you're just thinking it'd be more effective. But sure. I mean, I think any way to reach out, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe the phone call gets you to a principal, or maybe the administrator says actually he or she is an in-person person, or you know what they would prefer. You know, there's going to be my staff would say it'd be tough for someone to get a hold of me in person, so you're going to shoot them an email first. You know, so there may be some of that taken care of if there's some sort of correspondence a call or an email mm -hmm. I, I was sitting there thinking I wish we could have created a action item to create a subcommittee and those mm -hmm. two people could have ran it but I think you could almost just appoint two people from your action and it wouldn't be an official subcommittee but those two people would be working and they're allowed to work together oh. because it's less than the threshold that it would be for everyone to be involved so you'd almost just say if you are comfortable saying two people are going to set this up and then they're going to assign us, you could probably get away with some of that, right? Okay. It wouldn't be an official committee, but it would act in that same capacity. Yeah. That you would have to assign them in your motion. Okay. So that's a, that's a thought, too. Okay. Any other discussion? So maybe in the document, just uh, if we can put something about, like, if, or even if we have, like, a like an email that we can just send out that just says like, if this is what we want to do, we would love to talk about it more. We could either do it over phone, email, or in person, let them choose. And then I could definitely do some in-person meetings. Obviously I couldn't do every school, but, um, and I think Carol was interested in that as well. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think that's a good idea. If we do the, the Google doc of the actual letter and then the Excel spreadsheet of all the schools and then just sign up who you're going to contact and then go from there. So but the spreadsheet also be on Google Docs? Yeah, where? it'll be it'll be a shared document. So then and then you can just assign yourself to what school you want to contact. It, from this standpoint, from the meeting standpoint, are you allowed to have like a note section to to say like the current status of contacting like why? I think you could. Have it. Yeah. yeah, you could. Yeah. That's okay. Okay, yeah. just checking. All right, yeah. thanks. Okay. I think if if someone created a Google Doc and there were fifteen schools, mm -hmm. and I'm able to put my name on the seven that I want. And then I'm able to reach out to the principal and I can say, reached out May 19th, not interested, reached out May 20th, this one is interested. I think you could do all That's that in the, I don't think you're communicating with a group in, in the way that 
it would reach a threshold that it would have to be in one of these meetings. That's great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to appoint two individuals? Can you move to appoint yourself? I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah you can appoint yourself. Uh, motion to appoint the two of us for <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. So, yeah. Do we need to spell that out better, Stephanie? I'll get it. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have a motion by Michael. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Item 5B, discuss and consider action to place items on the future Parks and Recreation Commission meeting agendas. Just a reminder, we can't talk about what we're going to put out, just that we would like to have it discussed next time. Um, I would think an update of that would probably be something y'all would want. Yep. You know, um, I think at some point uh, we've had some uh, new folks rotate on, but we've had, uh, um, I think, I think we're coming up close to a year from when we did our last workshop. Oh, yeah. So we should probably set a summer workshop. Mm -hmm. um, and the workshop is just a half day where we run through some of the, we just dive a little deeper into our park system, some of the stuff we're working on, and we do some, I don't know, we'll figure out what we're going to do the work session. So we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that next time. Okay. But maybe just discuss at first, just try to figure out what dates work for people and things like that. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? Anybody would like to see? <coughs> I was just about to comment that I hadn't coughed the whole time. <laughs> I almost got through it. All right. We'll discuss those two things on the agenda. Um, I do believe that's it. Do we have anything else, Mr. Shane? All right. Item six, adjourn. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I will... Uh, Motion to adjourn. <laughs> all right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Time is 8 12.